Uh, my name is Micah Evans, and this is uh, the Flame Shop at Corning Museum of Glass, and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, um, I'm going to be doing a demo today for you guys. Um, and it's kind of a little technique, exploration of techniques. Um, a couple of little things, I'm going to make a yo-yo. A lot of it is just hollow, uh, how to kind of manipulate hollow glass and kind of push it to its limits. We're going to, um, I'm going to try to invert, do a lot of inversions, and I'll kind of talk about that as I go. Um, so let's see, a little bit about me, if you don't know. I'm from Austin, Texas. I've um, been flame working for about 16, 17 years, full time. And um, this is my first time at Corning. I'm really excited to be here. This is an amazing facility. Uh, if it, and the museum and the library are, um, I'd always heard about them. And I got to take a tour this week. And um, I can't recommend coming here highly enough if you're into glass. This is, um, especially you know, young flame workers, um, this is uh, your, your mecca. This is where you should be coming. You got to come experience this. Um, Anyway, I'm excited to go explore more. But for now, let's do a couple demos. And uh, see how long it takes me to fall on my face in front of you guys. It's the curse of the demo. Something always goes wrong. So we'll see how this goes. Um, we'll be starting off with scallop tubing. 40 millimeters. I have some stuff prepped, but I'm going to try to do as much on the fly as possible and see what kind of time we have. We've got about an hour. Um, so, first thing I'm going to make is what I kind of called my ripple discs. And it's just a um, kind of a flat circle uh, with these kind of concentric rings that um, it's a big kind of tapered tube of glass that starts out kind of looking like a layer cake that I then compress back into itself, kind of like a collapsible cup, if you've ever seen one of those collapsible camping cups. So anyway, I'm, I like to start out by pulling points. So what I'm going to do here is heat this 40 millimeter scallop tubing Kind of a nice soft flame. You'll see me kind of going at 45 degrees center, 45 degrees. Trying to create a nice heat gradient. Getting this thing a little, a little loose, ready to stretch. And what this is going to allow me to do is pull out, stretch out these handles that I can then hold on to to manipulate this glass. Start to stretch slowly. You can start to see the color dissipate a little bit. Once it starts to cool off, I can increase this pace that I stretch. I like to pull really long points. It gives me the flexibility to choose what length I want. If you have a point that's too short, it's really tricky to lengthen it. And too long, I can always trim it down. In uh, with flame workers, there's two philosophies. Either you uh, pull points or you can attach a handle. There are two different ways to kind of work with hollow glass. Or you, you know, can just work off the stock tubing. Um, I uh, learned by pulling points. And um, so that's how I start off. Everything I make hollow is by pulling a point. Eventually, I'll switch to handles when it becomes necessary, either when the um, I've added so much material that the point is no longer structurally sound, uh, thick enough to carry the weight. Or uh, once I start switching axes so many times, um, it's easier to attach a blow tube. Or um, once I need to attach my blow hose, it's easier to couple to the end of a stock to piece of tubing rather than a point. So I uh, typically switch to blow tubes when I need to attach my blow hose. Right now I'm just waiting for this to cool off a little bit before I open this up. I like to, um, people use a lot of different stuff. I like to use that little sticky tack stuff that you uh, 
hang posters on the wall with in your dorm room, you know, so it doesn't leave holes. Um, I like to use that to plug the ends of my tubes because uh, it's, uh, it's built to come off of walls, you know, without any residue, so it really comes out of your glass without leaving any residue. And um, you can tear it up to any size on the fly and plug a, plug a hole. So after you pull a point, um, oftentimes they're crooked. This one's pretty good, but um, for demo's sake, I'm going to straighten it. And also, um, my philosophy behind how I straighten these points, when you stretch out a point, it's much thinner than the glass you stretched it from, just to by the nature of how you pull that point. Um, so while I'm straightening this, I'm actually letting it thicken up a little bit. I'm going to create this little thick buffer zone between that thin point handle and that tube. So it's almost like I thicken it up and pull a little mini point on each side of this stock tubing. So that two, serves two purposes. Straighten that handle and give me a little thick anchor right there so that when I start to heat this scallop tubing, the overspray from this torch won't melt these much thinner point handles that I'm using to hold on to the piece with. Give it time to cool off. Next step is to put a nice soft heat into the scallop tubing and get it to twist. Scallop tubing um, is beautiful. I love this. It just is uh, optic, right? So it's got little thick lines that run down the center, little ribs. Um, and the trick is to really get this stuff to work well is to get a nice spiral, to get it to spin. It's really frustrating at first when you're first starting out with this because it's a delicate balance. You really got to learn the right heat, the right flame, the right pace to get this to move all in one go. A lot of times you'll heat one spot and get it to twist, and then you heat another spot, get it to twist, and then you kind of have this uneven spiral. It's really hard to get it to go all in one fluid motion. And really the trick is to heat it very slowly, get it all to the same temperature at the same time. get it all almost ready to move, and then start at one end and move to the other so it's um, kind of ready to go. So you see me get a lot of time really kind of laying in a nice soft heat from end to end in this. And really I'm looking, I, there's, it's not a, a lot of what I do, especially in these demos, is uh, you're working by feel. You're navigating by the way it feels because you're working with clear glass. Um, sometimes it's really not hot enough to glow or look really hot, so you're responding to how, it's, how your hands are moving, how you're feeling the glass shift. So there are some visual cues I'm responding to, but mostly I'm responding to how it feels. So I can feel it starting to loosen up and I can see the red glow felt it before I saw it. So now I can start to twist from one side. Kind of got this weird hitch. I kind of go back and forth and kind of drag one hand, pull one hand a little quicker. So I kind of made one pass got a bit of a spiral. I'll give this a little puff, try to even out this wall that got a little uneven. I'm going to do that one more time, I think, try to get a little bit of tighter of a spiral. And give myself a little more heat.
Still just trying to get this twist just right. Cool part about scallop tubing is uh, it's thick and thin. Once you get a good spiral, you got these thick, thicker lines that are spiraling around the thinner gaps between those lines. But those thick lines kind of end up being these nice anchors. If you've got a nice evenly distributed twist, it really wants to expand round. You got these nice anchors that are kind of keeping it in a nice cylinder. If you get a nice even heat and give it a puff, it will really stay round. So, got a nice heat in here, got a nice twist. Finish off this end and go back and start to create my tiered shape. You'll notice that when I come out and give it a little puff, I go directly back in the flame without really looking at it. Oftentimes, um, especially when you're first starting out, you'll blow into it, stop and look, feel that it's crooked, and stop and look at where it's, it's crooked, where, where you screwed up. And in that time, you've lost all that nice heat you've laid into these things, and it's really hard to lay that heat back in evenly to correct it. Whereas if you just kind of go right back in the flame and keep spinning straight, the glass will often self-correct to straight again, taking advantage of that nice core heat you have and that nice muscle memory you've created in your arms to spin straight. So the first, this is the biggest, uh, I'm kind of setting the outside radius of this disc that I'm going to work from right now. So I'm trying to blow a nice even bubble. I'm going to taper down from there and create this kind of layered cake shape. So I want to kind of create a flat wall on what is my right side of this piece. So I'm trying to heat the right side of this bubble from the apex of the big bubble down to where the rest of this tubing starts to take off from. As I start to feel it loosen up, start to compress and push in with my right hand just a little, create this nice flat edge is going to be the first step of that first layer of this layer cake. I'm going to give that time to cool off before I start to work on that next layer. Now with each layer I build, you know, um, the next layer down gets progressively smaller. And so I'm going to kind of first anticipate that and stretch out this taper a little further so I have a smaller diameter to feed in as I build these layers. And I'll probably do this after every layer 
and get a better eye on what kind of diameter you're going to need to feed in for that next following layer. So trying to avoid that flat wall I just created, but get as close to it as possible, and heat, and expand just a little bit. to notice my flame as I go through this, I'll still keep it smaller and smaller. And I'll make it a little bigger to blow out that form. And then when I'm trying to create this nice flat wall, as the steps get smaller, so do my flames. Remember that it's all a game of proportion with the scale of the object to the scale of the flame. Bigger the job, bigger the flame. Second layer. Again, seeing that I'm going to need to taper this down a bit, I'm looking ahead to the next layer. Heating again as close to that wall as I can get without really affecting it. A little puff just to get that wall headed out in the right direction. Maybe one more. Proportional flame to the size of the job. kind of heating that edge, the shoulder, and pushing in to create this nice flat wall out of that taper. And I think I might be able to squeeze one more in here, so I'm going to try. This, is, this last one is always where it gets hairy. Um, the setup for this really has to be perfect the whole way. Otherwise, the last bit that you collapse really gets tricky. So again, flame is a little too aggressive. This, the, the wall thickness is thinned out a lot down here. Trying to give myself a bit of thickness in this last little stretch to push with. You'll understand that in a second. And I'm going to shrink my flame down proportionally to this last little layer and see if I can get a nice edge on this last layer.
And again, this is going to be the roughest one. I can tell already. But I think it's going to work. All right. So I've established my layers. But the one problem area I'm seeing, what I'm going to end up doing is heating the, each of these walls that have created those nice flat spots to the point where they want to move, and then I'm going to compress it inwards. But what I'm looking at now is that first, the, the, the round part of that first bubble I created may get in the way of that push. So I'm going to go back, switch which side I'm blowing in, which is the nice part about using this to plug, is you can just pop it right back out, and stick it in the other end. I'm going to kind of just basically create that flat wall again on the other side, what's going to be the back side of this. I might even... I'm actually noticing a little bit of a hitch. I may have switched sides a little before this cooled off completely, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a heat, try to feel it straighten out without changing much. All right. To get these to compress in, you really need this thing to be straight. So this is where um, things could get off if I, in this, this part right here, somehow change how it's spinning. If it's spinning a little crooked, once I finish this part off, it could really screw up the rest of this. So. This is where it's nice to have the scallop tubing that really likes to be round, really likes to compress round. So this last little bit, what I'm going to do here is just kind of heat the, the edge of this point handle to make sure everything's spinning straight. I'm going to go back, switch around again, and start to compress this thing down, collapse the cup. All right. So. This is where it, it all comes together. So this is kind of a one-shot deal. You really, once you start doing this, you don't get to blow into it anymore. Like, this is it, right? So it's really important to get this heat right, the compression. Everything needs to kind of work together. So I'm heating just the edge of this first layer. And again, I'm not looking for a visual response. I'm trying to make sure that the flame is hitting where I need it to. But I'm feeling when the handle in my right hand starts to loosen up. It gives me a cue of when I can start pushing inwards and testing the elasticity of this glass. So this first bit, I'm only going to push in a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of room to do it. And I want to keep it on center. If you screw up the first one, the rest of them are doomed. So that's all I'm going to do is give it a little bit of an inward push. That'll become more apparent what I'm talking about as I move up a layer. It'll be easier to see. So again, now, let this cool off just a little bit so I can kind of point and show what I was talking about. So it's this wall, this square wall here. I don't exactly know where the cameras are coming here. I'm going to try to heat. So there's a kind of a misconception about 
these inverted forms in, um, about how I do them or how, you know, kind of how they can be done. There's, there's a couple ways. Like I can just heat this and stretch it inwards. But what I'm trying to do, heat this edge until it loosens up. I feel it loosen. I can push, I can feel it pushing in and I can just push and stretch it in. But instead of stretching it in, I'm going to transition, once it starts to push inwards, transition my flame from that sidewall to the outside and try to get that material to fold under instead of stretch, if that makes sense. So I go from heating this wall to get it to push, second one. Transition from, again, I'm going to increase the size of my flame for the size of the job. Heating the sidewall of that layer I created until it starts to move. Once it starts to move, I'm going to transition my heat from the sidewall to the outside. Instead of stretching, I'm going to start heating to feed from the outside to the inside. Starting to move inward, transition the heat from the wall to the exterior, which then folds the glass to the interior. If you just stretch it, it creates a lot of tension and stress right at that edge. Not saying this is an, a, a form that isn't stressed, but um, it's definitely happier than it would have been had I just pushed and stretched. It also makes a bit more of a pleasing shape. Kind of a more of a contour. When I make my next demo, um, the yo-yo, that will become more apparent. The last layer. Heating the sidewall, starts to push inward, transition the heat to the outer wall to try to feed some of that outer wall glass to the interior of that push. And then since I have room on the back side here, I'm going to give a little heat, make sure all those layers I just compressed are a little happy. I'm going to kind of give the back side a push inward. Try to stop before I touch on the inside there. Those two sides will touch. So, and this is just, there's, you know, this is just an object. This is basically an exercise. You know, I've turned this into a, a number of different production lines, but really this was a shape I drew in my sketchbook, kind of seeing how far I can take shaping just one hollow tube of glass. And, you know, over the years I found that this compression and inversion is kind of, you know, close to the edge of what you can do with one bubble without adding or removing anything. So now I'm going to remove centerpiece, clean this up a little bit, and make it happy. So um, once I remove this last little nub, I can kind of show, get a little closer look into the camera so you can see what was going on before I put it in the annealer. And then uh, I'll take it off. I'll pull it out again at the end in case somebody pops in and wants to see this on the live feed um, before I detach it from this, this handle and put it away. I just want to make sure I clean up that last little bit. So this is the form. kind of ends up looking, you know, the my initial idea was like a water droplet into a pond, you know, and how that is radiating circles. 
Um, and the scallop tubing really gives it a glitter. Um, and it's, um, but it's really, uh, it grabs all the color that's around it, kind of refracts it, which is really neat. That's the beauty of clear glass. But so this is just one of those technique exercises that's good to practice. And um, it's probably one of the hardest shapes that I do. Um, in some of my other work um, on, the, on the functional to pipe side of this, um, taking, mirroring these two layer cakes and compressing them together, mirrored on opposite sides, um, and then tying those together with little hollow seals each time I compress a layer um, has turned into a kind of a water filtration system. It's one of the hardest things I do. It was ridiculous, silly. Um, didn't really work any better than anything else, but it was just uh, um, challenging yourself, coming up with conceptual ideas, projects, and then um, just practicing until you can execute them. You learn a lot, but sometimes they just don't turn into anything. And this is one of those things that is really cool. I love doing it. And then it's just like, now what do I do with it? Um, so again, I'm just trying to make this a little happy again. I'm sitting here yapping away, uh, and this is cooled off. So I want to make sure this makes it out of the kiln. So I'm just going to take it to a point where I feel like it's nice and warm and put it in this little garage. And again, I'll pull it out later and pull it off of this handle so you just have this little fancy, uh, fancy coaster. Um, but that's my ripple disc. All right. So. That'll drive you crazy. If you guys are going to try that, I would imagine start with a couple of, you know, one or two. Start with trying to push, take a bubble and invert, just, just push that point in, see how it moves. And try to stagger, try to do a couple layers. Um, you know, keep adding layers. Like, uh, I, the most layers I've gotten in one disc are, is seven or, seven or eight. Um, so it's just the, the, the bigger it is, the more you can fit in. It's fun. Um, so I'm going to take that concept of um, just the compression and do what I, and like I just talked about, taking those and mirroring those and pushing them together on either side. And I'm going to uh, make a yo-yo. Um, so this shape, which I call a yo-yo, is something that had been, I started blowing glass in 1999. In about 2001, I drew this shape in a sketchbook. Um, going, knowing that, oh wow, this is really possible, this is cool. I think I can make this shape. I didn't have the skills to do it, but I knew it was possible. Some of the pipe production lines we did, and then ornament production lines we did, kind of had this bubble that was kind of um, awkwardly pushed into itself, and then we made jellyfish out of it, or you make a, what looks like a mushroom. Um, into the pipe, you know, and so it was this thing we were doing over and over again, and these jellyfish kind of took off, this other business we, I was involved with. This jellyfish took off, so uh, we started, I started to get really good at it, and every once in a while I would just nail one perfectly, and it would just push this, what looked like a hemisphere, a circle inside a circle, right? And so I'd just get this beautiful contours flowing inside and then to the outside, and it happened once out of, you know, once out of 50. It was just beautiful, you know, everything lined up. Um, and that's when I realized, well, shoot, if I mirror that on both sides and I get two of these, it would just be this beautiful circle with a circle inside tied together. Anyway, um, and so I immediately started trying, and the odds of doing that when you get one out of 50 that work are pretty low, um, of getting two that work mirrored each other and symmetric, symmetrical. So anyway, it took a long time to actually get one of these to work. In fact, it took me about 10 years. And then I got it to work. I got good enough that I got it to work. And I sat there and was like, I did it. And like, now what do I do with this thing? Because there was nothing to do with it. It wasn't until a couple of years later of me doing things with it. I made it into a, a pipe. I did a lot of stuff with it that somebody says, well, don't you make yo-yos out of it? And I was like, you know, I never thought of that. I just call it my yo-yo shape. And so we took one, we put a string on it, and let it go. And I'll be damned if it wasn't a perfect yo-yo. So I make glass yo-yos. And first, I put strings on all these and thought, this is it, man. I'm going to retire on glass yo-yos. These are the coolest. Turns out 
not a big market for glass yo-yos. <laughs> But they're really cool, another good exercise. Actually, I sell a, bit, a bunch of them now, um, but the, they were more objects of interest you know, than, than people use them. You know, it's like an old school wooden yo-yo. They don't really work that well. I mean, there's no bearings in them, so they don't, you, they don't, you don't drop it and it comes right back up. You've got to throw it like a baseball in order for it to bounce back up. But once you get the hang of it, they're fun. And I really, we ran around last night trying to find yo-yo string. Uh, I usually have, I keep a dozen of them in my tool bag when I travel, because this is a demo I do every so often. But for some reason, I have yet to, I didn't, I didn't notice I was empty before I left. It was funny, I used to use uh, whatever string I had around, and finally uh, somebody that was into yo-yoing was like, you really need to use yo-yo string. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, and uh, I just went home like, man, where the heck am I going to find yo-yo string? Um, yo-yo string.com. Wouldn't you know? Couldn't find anything. Yo Yoing's coming back big time, too. A couple of like uh, pro, semi pro yo yo guys have kind of tracked me down and on uh, Instagram, social media. Um, and um, it's picking back up. And they're doing some crazy stuff. So you notice how I'm opening these holes. I'm actually going to do a couple little encalmos. I prepped this a couple of things up. I've already spun up the scallop tubing I'm going to use for part of this. Uh, sectioned up a couple of things I'm going to um, pattern-wise I want to do. Just these, I just want to do some lip wraps, stacked black lip wraps, which is kind of at one point was my signature. And now it's a lot of people's signatures, so it, doesn't, it isn't as evident that it's my work. But I still love to, to do them. But you'll notice that, well, you'll notice on that last piece, on the, the ripple, I didn't marver it once. I didn't touch it with a single tool. Um, and uh, that's kind of developed into a philosophy of mine with this stuff that um, I don't use a lot of tools. I've got a reamer, some tweezers, a paddle, and that's about it. Scoring tool. I mean, I use a lot, I can, I use a lot more tools, but really that's about all I need to make, you know, 80% of what I make. So, you know, you see me opening up holes with glass, cleaning things up with glass, um, I use glass as my tool for um, a lot of what I do. And the, the interesting part about that, when I look back, it's really because uh, you know the guys I worked with, we were all broke and couldn't afford tools, and they couldn't afford tools, and so I learned without tools, and this is how they, they taught me with um, We'd take these welding electrodes that were graphite, and we'd file them into little little itty bitty reamers or little itty bitty bowl pushes and then we'd use glass as our tool for everything else. Well, you know, and back in the 90s nobody was really making a ton of really nice flame working tools as well so it wasn't like we had them at our fingertips. At least we didn't know if we did, you know. The internet was still just, just kicking off so we couldn't go on a glass supply website and just find them. So anyway, this is Jet Black. Um, it's for a project. I forgot to bring Jet Black Rod, but this is for a project I'm going to do at the museum next week. Um, and what I do is I take, uh, I have a borosilicate little crucible furnace, and I like to take uh, a big clear rods and dip them into this black and stretch them back out. So I have this nice black with a clear core. Typically for these lip wraps, I use just Jet Black because uh, it's a very thick uh, color and it holds up really well in these lip wraps. This has a clear core, so I don't exactly know how well it's going to hold up, but um, I'm going to use it. I tried some other, an, another black yesterday and it did not hold up as well as this jet does. So um, I'm going back to this. Even with a clear core, I think it's actually going to behave 
better than most blacks in this application. So I'm trying to apply that lip wrap to the outer edge. Oh. Coffee kicked in, got a little shaky, lined it up. To lined it up perfectly, stuck it together crooked, and then shifted it back, and hopefully it'll even out nicely by the time I blow this out to the final shape. And do that one more time on the other side. I'll explain a little bit more of what I'm doing along the way here. Opening up with a piece of glass. This is a demo that isn't really going to work in just explaining it. You kind of have to sit behind me and do this to really get the hang of it. The opening up the end of the tube really cleanly. You know, it's pretty much. 90% of what you get with shears, and it's a lot quicker. And when you do things, this connect holes this small and blow them out to something much larger, that 10% you'd have gained with using shears is, you really can't see it, so. flame right on the edge A little tap plug up the other end so as I connect these I'm trying to get both of these lips nice and hot same diameter, hopefully. Really, really, really close. Touch them together. I'm going to put all my heat right into that black lip wrap. And as it starts to condense just a little bit, and puff it back out. Just try to puff it right back out to the diameter that those tubes were to begin with. A little more heat. And a little puff again. right back out to that diameter. Take these, open them up. So earlier I'd kind of prepped up these two little pieces of uh, tubing that are a little bit bigger in diameter. This would be the end caps of the yo-yo. Again, lip wrap.
plug one end and calm out. Missed that one a little bit. Again, put that heat right into that black as it condenses a little bit. Puff it out. This time I'm going to take those two smaller Encomos and try to puff them out the same diameter of the larger tube. A little more heat, heating a little more of the material up to the larger tube. Puff, puff, puff. Putting my heat into the second Encalmo line, the little lip wrap. Transition that heat up into the larger tube. Puff, puff, puff. So what you see me doing is picking a spot where I want to move this glass. I want to make it bigger. I heat kind of the transitional zone of where I want to move it to and then give it a little air. Spinning until it cools off. Try to keep it as straight as possible. Open it up. One more time. The last time, the last one, these holes didn't line up perfectly and I tried to just kind of fudge it and um, it caused just a little problem. I think it worked out, but this time I'm going to take the time to really match these both up. Stick them together. Well, that time I just didn't stick them together right. Heat it up, let it condense. There's a little bit of thickness variation because I didn't quite line that up perfectly, but hopefully by heating this up and letting it collapse and blowing it out a couple times, the thickness variation will even out and it won't um, really affect the lip wrap too much. By the time I'm done, it should look good. Again, heating down the line, blowing it out, match the diameter. Attach my point handle, open it up, ready to seal to the last bit and shape this yo-yo.
So the reason I really like using glass as a tool as well is because it allows me to kind of do things on the fly, like open up this hole with the other piece still in my hand, you get these skills, and it's like you can really transition from move to move and do some steps in between that you don't have to sit around and look for a tool, put things down, put them in the kiln. It's a quick move. As long as you have glass around you, you're ready to go. Plug that in. A little dirty, but should even out. And you guys in class, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. I don't, you know, I don't just have to yap at the camera. I think I just spotted something I really like, which is the clear core in this black. It's giving me this really interesting profile on these lip wraps. I like it so much, I'm sorry I said something. I think I might be using this a lot from now on. Gives it a nice, nice veiled look. Still looks black from the side, but when you look down the barrel, it has this nice transparent center. No more lip wraps. That's the last one, hopefully. Plug it. Stick it. All right, so now I can, after I finish just evening this out, the diameter, I can really start working on the shape of this. I might do it in two stages. I might blow this out to a larger cylinder, 
divide it in half, blow out each side, compress it together. So let's, all right, let's get going. Might go a little over an hour, but I'm gonna try to wrap this up and uh, might not talk you through it as much, but really that's the meat of the time involved in the yo-yo. All right. One more little heat, maybe a marver on the center. I'll divide it in half. It's very important that it's, for me, that, and for the yo-yo's sake, forget it to function correctly, is that we're pretty balanced, right? And uh, the easiest way to do that was for me to take all the tubing, like I did, and kind of divide it in half. For all those in calmos, you know, all the end caps, everything was taking a piece of tubing and just dividing it in half so I knew each side contained relatively the same amount of material. And blow this all into one, hopefully, pretty even section and divide it in half, and hopefully blow some circles <laughs> that are the same size, some spheres. So now I'm gonna stretch this out, kind of, it's gonna end up kind of looking like a uh, hourglass. So 
So again, I'm kind of pulling a mini point right in the middle of this. Trying to keep an eye on whether I'm dividing it in half and heating a little more from one side or the other. If I notice that it's getting, the proportion is getting off. Making sure I'm drawing from each side in the same amount. So I usually have some calipers to make sure that these are the same size. Does anybody here have calipers by any chance? Could you, could I borrow those? That's okay. I just need a general, you know. Perfect. You can lay them down anywhere. I'll grab them. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. blow out one side. A nice sphere. Make sure it's spinning straight. I'm going to do the other side. Normally, I you know I'd measure both sides, the you know, of uh, or both directions with the calipers. Make sure I'm same size, top to bottom, and side to side. But we're just going to plow through this. I'm going to try to just get it the same diameter, top to bottom here, and just fingers crossed that. We look pretty good side to side. Finish this thing off. All right, one more little puff. Quick measure, looks pretty good. And we'll compress and finish. All right. I can see side to side, there's a little different profile on the interior curve here where I'm pointing my flame. So I'm gonna try to puff this, stretch it out just a little bit. 
Give a little puff, and then we'll go for it. This will be on the fly adjustment. All right. Small flame. I'm going to kind of try to remember that flat wall I created on the last shape for all those stair steps of that uh, layer cake. I'm kind of do the same thing each side of this. Different, the different kind of profile of this interior wall will affect how much you have to push it in to get to the center of this post. Um, now it would be a lot easier to see should I have a couple of different yo-yos ready to push together. But if I can pre-shape this to be a pretty flat wall, I don't have to push it in as far to get a nice hemisphere. If I shape most of the hemisphere first, I don't have to push it in as far, which is what I'm going to try to do. I think I don't have enough. I may have uh, been better off if I stretched that out a little further. But the right size gap for these yo-yos to function correctly is actually pretty important. You don't want it too, too far away, and you don't want it too close. There's a little Goldilocks zone gap that you're shooting for. It's kind of a pain in the butt to adjust it either way. All right, so heating that interior wall. This is where there's no going back. Transitioning your heat from the inside wall to the outside. Repeat on this side. See, I think I want a little more room, so I'm going to fudge it a little bit. Get my nice little needle flame, shoot the gap, heat up that center post a little bit. Stretch it out. Now I have a little more room to push in from each side and hopefully get a nice mirrored shape. Almost there. Again, heating that edge. Yes. I want to sit down, Jake. I don't know. Turn the way. A little push from one side. Match it up with the other. I like to open up a hole on both sides of this. That way there's it's not a vacuum on the in the inside there.
preheating this tool, grab that edge, finish off that last side. finished. And that's the yo-yo. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>